Hey everyone, it's Jackov, and I'm here today with a video ranking all the melee infantry units in Total War Rise of Mordor. If you're new to the channel, Total War Rise of Mordor is a mod for the game Total War Attila, the mod link in the description, completely overhauling the game and basing it off of the world of Lord of the Rings. In a previous video, I looked at and compared the unique general and command units in the game, ranking them in terms of how useful they are, using their statistics, availability, and abilities to determine their rankings. In this video, we'll be doing the same thing but looking at melee infantry, which are almost all sword and shield infantry with one or two exceptions, these troops making up a large portion of most armies. At the end of the video, the charts that I use to compare their qualities will be shown. Before I get into the rankings, I just want to make sure it's clearly known that this is purely my opinion, and as such is subjective, so if my rankings don't match your own personal ones, don't feel bad. That said, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the units in the comments. All up, the mod, as of version 0.5.6, currently has 28 different melee infantry units spread across its factions, although a few are quite similar. However, those units will be touched on in detail later on in the video. With all that said, let's jump into the rankings. In last place, we have the Mordor Rabble, Bronze Tier, Tier 1, Light Melee Infantry. While it may seem fitting that a throwaway unit of orcs cobbled together is worst when it comes to ranking, in truth, there's more to this unit that belies its poor performance. The Mordor Rabble is a unit in the Isengard roster that's essentially identical to the Orc Rabble unit in the Mordor roster, sharing the exact same stats, powers, and price. If you've watched my last video, you're probably wondering why I haven't grouped them together like I did other practically identical units in my last video, and the reason is their recruitment limitations. Unlike the Orc Rabble in the Mordor roster, which can be recruited as much as you can afford, when playing as Isengard, only three of this unit can be in an army, negating the greater strength of the Rabble units, their ability to be massed cheaply, overwhelming stronger enemies with their numbers. With this fatal flaw, the unit fails to reach any meaningful modicum of usefulness, easily giving the unit last place. It should be noted that the regular Orc Rabble units will be higher up in the rankings, however. Coming in second last are the Mahud Clubmen, a unit of silver tier, tier 2, light melee infantry, which may seem like a bit of an odd choice for such a low position. While they are among the cooler looking units in the mod, they don't exactly have a role that they fulfil well. As a unit, they're designed to give the Haradrim faction some melee infantry options in the early game, an area the faction is lacking in due to their strengths being more in spears and archers. However, light as they are, they're outclassed by many other melee units they'll face off against in battle while also being limited to a maximum strength of 3 units per army. This means that the unit really doesn't achieve much that can't be done by better units on an individual basis, while also being incapable of being used in large numbers, making for a pretty lacklustre unit. Taking 26th place, we have what might be a controversial pick, the Silver Tier, Tier 2, Medium Melee Infantry, Ringlow Veil Men at Arms. While the unit is fairly standard when it comes to stats compared to other similar units, the unit is massively let down by its ability to only be recruited to a max strength of 3 per army. This means that the unit really can't be pressed into service to deal with enemies on a large scale, effectively meaning that the bridging of Gondor's lowest and highest tier melee infantry is a very flawed affair, forcing other Gondorian melee infantry to pick up the slack, even when at a disadvantage. Ultimately, the Ringlow Veil vale men-at-arms are best skipped over in place of other units or used as a quick stopgap measure. Coming in at 25th position, we find ourselves facing the Dwarven Company. This bronze tier, tier 1 medium melee infantry possesses this ranking due to its replaceability, with the Erebor faction having a better option to field that fulfills the exact same role, a unit that we'll look at later. One thing to note is that because some of the factions currently in the mod have only higher tier units available to be used, by default the Dwarven Company are outmatched by prospective opponents, other bronze tier units not really having the same problem due to being able to be used as fodder units, unlike the Dwarven Company, which don't make for cost-effective fodder. Taking 24th place, the Wraiths are a fairly unique unit in the Dol Guldur faction, being undead after all. What this means is that this Silver Tier, Tier 2 Heavy Melee Infantry unit has the greatest health and morale of any unit in the list, the entire unit practically needing to be killed before it breaks. While I'd say such a trait makes for an amazing unit, especially with its fair price, the unit, like many others ranked lowly, is let down by its unit limit, only being capable of being deployed at 3 at most. This prevents the unit from being overpowered, and at best makes it a meat shield to the Dol Guldur roster, 
which can be used to buy time in battle, the faction having a far more stable infantry option to build armies with. In 23rd place of the Orc Rabble unit found in the Mordor roster, capable of being recruited in large numbers unlike their Isengard brethren. It's this strength as well as the unit's clear defined role that gives it this ranking. Although being bronze tier, tier 1, very light melee infantry, there are most definitely other units that can perform the same job to a far greater degree, given that even against bronze units the Orc Rabble struggles unless being used in large numbers, not standing a chance against silver tier units, let alone gold, unlike its successors in the Mordor roster. In 22nd place, the Corsair Marines from the Haradrim faction make an appearance. This unit of silver tier, tier 2 medium melee infantry is fairly underpowered, however in comparison to its competitor, the Mahud Clubman, the Corsair Marines have one great strength, the ability to raid, allowing the unit to burn down buildings when near them. This ability makes this unit far more potent than it may seem on the surface, given that in sieges, destroying buildings helps grant a debuff on enemy troops, weakening them and making conquest that much more likely. Performance wise, the unit is essentially a stronger version of the Orc Rabble with the ability to raise buildings, only really being let down by a limit on recruitment, a limit which severely undercuts how potentially powerful the unit could be, while also confirming it as an option to be used by a prospective Haradrim general, rather than as a core strategy component. In 21st place is what also may be considered a controversial pick, the Gondor Sword Militia. As much as I love this unit, I'm not blind to its flaws. While the unit is capable of holding the line against bronze tier fodder, against even tier 2 units, it's very much to overmatch, which wouldn't be a problem if the unit had a proper counterpart meant to balance the odds against silver tier enemies. However, the Gondorian answer to this problem, the Ringlo Vale men at arms, are very lacking, as was previously covered. This means that the Gondorian sword militia are forced into suboptimal matches quite often, with even silver tier units on the lower end of the spectrum flogging them in fair fights, let alone unfair fights. This failure may be caused in large part by the Ringlo Vale men at arms, however the Gondorian sword militia is incapable of doing what the situation calls for, giving it this mediocre position. Taking the 20th spot, the Sword Thanes of Rohan. This unit of silver tier, tier 2 medium melee infantry is fairly alright at its role in comparison to the Ringlo Vale men at arms, capable of being recruited in large numbers. While the unit is good for being an infantry army building block, especially useful for a Rohirrim army needing to besiege enemy settlements, the unit is plain and clearly outmatched by another unit in the Rohan roster that does the same job as the Sword Thanes, but better in every way. A good unit, but one that's outshone by its contemporaries. Breaking into the teen rankings and taking 19th place are the Orc Warriors of Mordor. While this silver tier tier 2 medium melee infantry unit is outmatched by every other tier 2 unit in the video, Against tier 1 units, it dominates while not being expensive or limited, making for a unit that can quickly and fairly cheaply be recruited en masse. Taken together, this makes the Orc Warriors far and away superior to the Orc Rabble, essentially fulfilling the same role, but better. In 18th place, the Vinland Guards of Dale make a shocking appearance. As a unit, the Vinland Guards make for absolutely superb melee infantry, being gold tier tier 4 very heavy melee infantry, capable of beating just about any of the units in this video, but at the very least going toe to toe with the best of them. Being so strong, you might ask why they have this position, especially when they're so strong they're capable of being general units for Dale. The reason for their placement is because simply, they don't really serve a purpose in a Dalian army. Dale's roster has another melee infantry unit, the role outperformed by the Vinland Guards is a match for most of the tier 3 and below units, while also being capable of being recruited in numbers enough to be the core of an army something the Vinland Guards can't do due to their elite status. At the end of the day, they make for essentially very heavy melee infantry verging on shock infantry who are too expensive for what they bring to the table most of the time, only really being useful sometimes as an elite spearhead to lead your infantry assaults. In 17th place are more Dale units, the Silver Tier, Tier 2, Heavy Melee Infantry, Shipmen. As a unit, these guys make up the core of Dale's earlier armies if a transition to a more melee infantry oriented army is made. Heavier than most other tier 2 infantry, the shipmen can outfight or at least match most enemies at their level, while they excel at destroying fodder for a fair price investment. A versatile unit, the shipmen can even utilise a javelin volley to break up enemy formations, giving them that much more lethality. 
It's these factors taken together that lead it to be positioned higher than the Vinland Guards, who obviously have the advantage in a fair fight. As good as the unit is though, it is outperformed by others. One such unit that outperforms the shipment in my opinion are the Urukai Raiders coming in 16th. While they're all right as silver tier, tier 2 light melee infantry, beating tier 1 units handily and performing adequately against other tier 2 units, where the unit excels at is in its raider ability, allowing it to burn down buildings just like the Corsair Marines. Much like that unit, this ability gives the Urukai Raiders the same flexibility in sieges. However, it comes with a stronger unit that has no restrictions when it comes to recruitment, making massive armies of Urukai Raiders sacking settlements an achievable goal. For all that though, against stiff competition, the unit will falter, so there are other units that do better than it. Almost breaking into the top half of the list, but not quite reaching it, are the Dunherd Swordsmen, who take 15th place. As a unit, these silver tier tier 3 heavy melee infantry are capable of mixing it up against most other faction standard tier 3 units and holding the line, not having any limitation on their numbers, making them that much more viable in comparison to other units we've looked at so far. However, while the Dunherd swordsmen on the surface appear great, in reality they too suffer from not really having that much of a use within Dunlending armies, given that the shock troops that the faction specialises in are far more capable of outperforming the unit or cheaper units in the Dunlending roster give the faction units that perhaps aren't as good in combat but are more tactically flexible, leading to a unit that performs well enough but isn't really that necessary at the end of the day. Taking the 14th spot in the rankings, we have the Silver Tier, Tier 2, Heavy Melee Infantry Dwarven Warriors. This unit far and away outshines its predecessors the Dwarven Company in the Erebor roster, giving the faction a more solid option that is capable of fighting against tier 2 units and even buying time against more elite units, something the Dwarven Company is inherently incapable of doing so. The Dwarven Warriors lacking a limit on recruitment also improving their standing in the rankings. That said, melee infantry while useful aren't the typical core of an Erebor army, especially in the late game, so this unit can't be expected to match up with units that are indispensable to building armies. In the 13th spot, the Warlord's Bloodsworn stand tall, representing the peak of the Dunlending roster's performance in the rankings. A silver tier, tier 2 medium melee infantry unit, the Warlord's Bloodsworn aren't as hardy as the Dunherd swordsmen. However, they don't need to be, given that heavy melee infantry armies aren't the Dunlending speciality, instead focusing more in raiding armies designed to swarm enemies, or using shock infantry to break meaningful resistance. This unit most certainly fulfills the raiding part of the equation, having the ability to burn buildings which as noted before is quite powerful in sieges, combined with a unit strength that makes the Warlord's Bloodsworn stronger than rabble units and a real challenge to tier 2 units of the same level of strength. In 12th position we find the Dalian Swordsman, a very good unit of silver tier tier 3 heavy melee infantry who can match practically all tier 3 units and flog lesser units in battle slaughtering fodder with ease. In my opinion, this unit is flat out the best melee infantry option available to Dale. However, the fact that the faction does have other viable melee infantry, even if they are somewhat lesser, means that the unit isn't quite as necessary as some other units that will be taking higher positions in the rankings. Still a great unit to be sure though. In 11th place, the Silver Tier, Tier 3 Heavy Melee Infantry Umbar Usurpers make an appearance. While it may seem surprising that I've ranked these guys so high in comparison to other units, especially given that this unit does have a maximum strength of 3 units per army, restricting it from being the infantry core of an army, the truth is that this unit is best used to provide Haradrim armies with a bit of extra muscle, a role that the unit excels at, vastly reducing the impact of its limitations. Far better than the other restricted melee infantry options on the Haradrim roster, this unit can match other tier 3 units fairly well, with the core strengths of the Haradrim are used to dismantle enemy armies. Overall, this unit gets its position because it has a distinct role and it fulfills it well. Reaching the top 10 are the Eorling Retainers found in the Rohan roster. This unit of Silver Tier Tier 3 Heavy Melee Infantry are a cut above the Sword Fanes, giving the Rohirrim the ability to match heavy infantry armies with their own men, reducing the risk of being forced to solely rely on cavalry, something that's greatly valuable for Rohan especially in sieges, given the faction lacks shock troops entirely, this unit being forced into a composite role of shock troops and high tier line infantry. 
This unit boosts the strength of Rohan significantly in my opinion, which is why it's so high in the list, despite only recently being introduced to the mod. I've given 9th place to the Haradrim Swordsmen, who while they don't really stand out from the crowd that much, are deserving of the spot in my opinion. While the Silver Tier Tier 2 Medium Melee Infantry aren't the best in the game, they do provide the Haradrim faction with stability that it very much needs, not having any restrictions on recruitment, giving them the ability to somewhat overwhelm enemies with numbers in head-on clashes before transitioning to a more hit-and-run style of warfare, essentially operating as boosted fodder. A useful unit which can see a lot of service is my overall summary of the Haradrim Swordsmen, even if the Umbar Usurpers do have more raw strength. In 8th place, the Shipwrights Nobles of Linden stand tall. This gold tier, tier 4 very heavy melee infantry unit is the sole melee infantry unit available to Linden, meaning as its only option, it had better be good, and it most certainly is, capable of beating every unit on this list, only really being matched by the likes of the Vinland Guards. Like that unit, the Shipwrights Nobles are limited to a strength of 3 per army, also being one of two potential generals for Linden, and personally being the better choice in my opinion. As Linden very much relies on its shock infantry to clear away enemy armies, this unit makes for an elite addition to any force, bolstering its strength significantly, and just generally being one of the toughest units in the mod. Taking 7th place of the iconic Urukai infantry from Isengard, this unit of silver tier tier 3 very heavy melee infantry are the core of any Isengard army, especially when besieging enemy fortifications, making for a frontline unit that can fight tier 3 infantry to a standstill. Far and away an improvement from the Urukai raiders, while this unit can't destroy settlements with fire like the raiders, they are far deadlier and tougher, being the iron fist of Isengard. However, because the faction does have the Urukai raiders filling a similar role at a cheaper price point, the Urukai infantry aren't going to be as highly ranked as other units in the list. In 6th place we find the upgraded form of the Urukai infantry, the elite white hand stormers. These gold tier tier 4 very heavy melee infantry are among the strongest units on this list, sharing the same restriction as the other gold tier units, being restricted to a maximum strength of 3 per army. Much like the others, the white hand stormers are a prospective general unit for Isengard, however unlike the others, the white hand stormers are the only general unit available for Isengard meaning that the White Hand Stormers are quite literally an indispensable unit, something no other unit in this video is. In terms of what they offer apart from their general status, the White Hand Stormers are the most defensive unit in the Isengard roster, making them an invaluable asset when on the defensive, especially in sieges, whereas on the attack, their advanced status allows them to carve through enemy formations. A truly terrifying and powerful unit which is a must-have for any Isengard player, although that's more of a result of game limitations rather than choice, which is why the unit will take this position. Entering the top 5, the Uruk Throng of Mordor make for great contenders, easily being the best melee infantry that faction has available to it. Providing the faction with high tier infantry capable of matching the cream of the crop of most enemy armies, while also somewhat being capable of being used en masse, although to a lesser degree compared to cheaper fodder units, this silver tier tier 3 very heavy melee infantry being the exception to Mordor's playstyle of overwhelming enemies with low quality hordes. Because this unit severely ups the hitting power of Mordor's roster, it makes it into the top 5. However, because the faction does have other units like the Orc Warriors available, this unit isn't quite as necessary to the player as those ranked ahead of it in the rankings. Taking 4th place, and just barely not making it into the top 3, are the Gondor Sword Infantry. A controversial choice given they're arguably the most popular unit in the mod, if the rankings in the official discord for Rise of Mordor are anything to go by, being the archetypal high quality infantry unit of the mod. As a unit, the silver tier tier 3 very heavy melee infantry Gondorian sword infantry are practically necessary for a Gondorian army build, being the much needed step after the Gondorian sword militia, allowing Gondor to hold the lines against hordes of enemies, while also not having any recruitment limitations something that was very much needed for this unit to function optimally. However, while the unit does slaughter fodder and can grind equivalent enemies into dust, because Gondor has access to the Gondorian Sword Militia, who to their credit can handle the threats of the early game well, the unit isn't the sole option available to the faction, though it is by far the superior choice, the top 3 units only really outing it due to how necessary they are. Taking the bronze medal, 
of the Golder Blades, with the name suggests a part of the Gold Golder roster. These silver tier tier 3 very heavy melee infantry are the premier infantry of the faction, which as of now completely lacks melee infantry apart from the wraiths, which we already discussed, who are limited in their recruitment. This makes the Golder Blades the only really feasible option for being recruited en masse, being a unit that can defeat lower ranked units fairly well and somewhat match up to other tier 3 troops. Giving Dol Golder strength it desperately needs in all types of situations, be they battles on the open field or in sieges as either attacker or defender. Definitely a crucial unit for any prospective Dol Golder general. Coming in to snatch the silver medal are the Loke Rim Macemen of the Easterling faction. These silver tier tier 3 heavy melee infantry are the only melee infantry that the faction can currently field, making them even more valuable than the Dol Golder blades, given that the Easterlings rely on their good quality troops to beat enemies in a match of quality, not fielding any lesser fodder infantry. Because the unit is capable of matching other tier 3 units and is indispensable to the Easterling roster, the unit takes second place, its ability to be used in large numbers also greatly boosting its viability compared to some of the other units in the video. Taking first place and being the possessor of the gold medal are the Lasgalan Blades of the Woodland Realm, who are practically the same unit as the Locator Macemen, except far better. What I mean by this is that just like the previous unit, the Silver Tier Tier 3 Very Heavy Melee Infantry Lasgalan Blades are the sole melee infantry unit in the Woodland Realm's roster, meaning it must rely on these troops to a significant degree. Unlike the Locator Macemen, these units can not only decimate fodder, but are also stronger than all other Tier 3 units approaching gold tier levels of strength while having no limit on their recruitment, with only price being a barrier to using these troops as much as you want. It's for these reasons that I believe that the Lasgalan Blades are the epitome of melee infantry in the mod, as it currently stands, although you may disagree. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you do have any differences of opinion, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you have enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. It might not seem like a big deal, but for such a small channel, it truly means a lot. Rest assured, more videos on Total War Rise of Mordor and other mods will be coming out in the future. Stick around to the end of the video if you want to see my charts comparing the units. Otherwise, this is your host Jakov, signing out.